welcome to the fifth session of uh, VTU e Shikshan program in engineering chemistry for module 4. In our previous session, that is in fourth session, we discussed something about the application of uh, green chemistry, then challenges of green chemistry in near future, then what is uh, green fuel, taking an example of uh, biofuel, merits and demerits of uh, these uh, green fuels. And the next part of this uh, that is the hydrogen, as we know the hydrogen is uh, considered to be the world fuel of choice. And how this hydrogen is to be prepared by photoelectrochemical water splitting. That is nothing but PEC. So this water splitting process for the production of hydrogen is gained attention all over the world because of availability of hydrogen and a solar energy at a very negligible cost. And also, this is not at all producing any hazardous substance into the atmosphere. So, photoelectrochemical water splitting is one of the potential technique for clean solar hydrogen production and it has been utilized in small to large scale hydrogen production. So, what is the working principle behind this process? So, it is based on the conversion of light energy into electricity within a shell involving two electrodes immersed in an aqueous electrolyte. What happens? One of the electrode is made of or made up of semiconductor and is exposed to the light and is able to absorb the light radiation and it creates or generate electricity and this electricity later used for water electrolysis. Here there are three options for the arrangement of photoelectrodes in PES, sorry, in PEC assembly. So, what are the three possibilities? The first possibility, the photo anode made up of n time of semiconductor and the cathode is made of a metal. In second possibility, Photo anode is made of n type of semiconductor and photo cathodes are made of p type of semiconductors. And in third possibility, photo cathodes made of p type of semiconductor and anode is made of a metal. And this PS technique was uh, discovered in the year 1972 by two scientists called by the name Honda and Sujima. They investigated the water splitting process by using single titanium oxide also known as titanium 4 oxide or titania crystal which is a photo anode and platinum is used as a 
photo cathode. So this is the block diagram for the PES process, sorry PEC process. So here the anode is made of a semiconducting material cathode a platinum. So light radiation will strike on the surface of this uh, photo anode. So having energy, the energy of the light radiation is given by E is equals to H nu. Where yes. So where water photoelectrolysis using PEC involves several processes within photoelectrodes and at the photoelectrode electrolyte interface including light induced intrinsic ionization of the semiconducting material which results in the formation of the electronic charge carrier. So that is when light energy that is H nu so split form electrons and the hole where H is the Flank's constant and nu is the frequency of the radiation and E is the electron and H plus is the hole. So here what happens the oxidation of this water happens by this hole. Hole will oxidize the water and it produces H plus and the formed H plus that is the transport of the H plus ions takes place from photo anode to the cathode through the electrolyte. I repeat transport of the H plus ions takes place from the photo anode to the cathode through the electrolyte. And the transport of the electrons takes place from photo anode to the cathode through the external circuit. And as a result, the reduction of H plus ions takes place and which leads to the formation of water. So thus water is formed due to the reduction of these H plus ions, where H plus ions are formed due to the oxidation of the water by a hole. So thus we are preparing the water, sorry, we are preparing the hydrogen by this technique. Similarly, the another process that is photocatalytic water splitting process. So what do you mean by the term photocatalytic water splitting? So photocatalytic water splitting is an artificial photosynthesis process with photocatalysis used for the dissociation of water into hydrogen and oxygen by making use of light energy. So here in this case what happens in thermal decomposition process water is required to heat more than 2000 degrees Celsius in order to produce hydrogen and oxygen. And this process that is thermal decomposition process of water to form hydrogen and oxygen is quite expensive because we are supposed to heat 2000 degrees Celsius is considered to be an expensive process. Whereas Photocatalytic water splitting can be performed by making use of light that you visible light radiation. So, for this process, uh, titanium oxide is most 
are useful and is employed as a photocatalyst. But their wide band gap between valence band and conduction band leads to the inefficient under visible light radiation. It will absorb only a UV radiation due to the large gap between valence band and the conduction band. In case of titanium oxide, it cannot absorb the light radiation in the visible light, a visible region of the spectrum. But it will absorb in UV region of the spectrum. And most of the sun rays reaching the earth's surface, so consist only 4% this UV radiation. So therefore, by doing some alteration in the valence band and conduction band of titanium oxide, or by making use of or by adding some photosensitizer, it is possible to enhance the property of this titanium oxide. So what is photocatalysis? Photocatalyst is a material that function as a catalyst and when it is exposed to the light, the photocatalytic activity PCA depends on its ability of the catalyst to create the hole and electron pair which generate free radicals. What I am going to tell, you have to select the material in such a way that the difference between the two that is valence band and the conduction band should same or nearly same to that of the reduction potential of the water. So this is the block diagram for the process. So what happens when light strikes on photocatalyst? So think of it, this is the surface, so this is uh, what you call anode, so this is the cathode, yes, this is the anode and this is the cathode, external circuit, okay, so this is uh, what I am just saying, anode and this is the cathode taken in an electrolyte. So this is what you call valence band of this and this is the conduction band of this anode that is nothing but titanium oxide. So what happens now here when light strikes on photocatalyst, the so surface of the anode, it will generate electron and hole. So electrons and holes will be formed. So what will happen? Electrons undergoes excitation. And these electrons and holes will be formed. The hole combines with water molecule. It produces oxygen. For this we require 1.23 electron volt in order to happen this reaction. We are in need of 1.23 electron volt and proton produced from this reaction. The proton which is produced from this reaction combined with electron produced that is combined with electron that produce hydrogen, thus the overall energy required is 1.23 electron volt. That is electron will produce the hydrogen whereas hole will produce the oxygen. That is the basic principle. But the experimental value required for this 
is slightly higher than this theoretical value of 1.23 ohm. If you carry this in the lab, so the experimental value is 1.23 ohm. So that is slightly higher than uh, 1.23 volt. Experimental value is slightly higher than 1.23 volt. This is because of over potential or over voltage. So what I am just showing here now, photo catalyst. Say for example, titanium oxide. It produces electrons and holes. And these holes combine with water. I said it produces oxygen along with a proton. The proton combines with electrons and it produces hydrogen. So electrons are responsible for the production of hydrogen. Whereas holes are responsible for the production of so oxygen. Hole can produce oxygen, electron can produce hydrogen. And overall reaction that is water molecule splits to form hydrogen and oxygen. It will not produce, this process will not produce any harmful byproducts into the environment. So that is the main advantage of uh, production of hydrogen from water splitting. So the hydrogen which is produced during this process that is water splitting is used for hydrogen oxygen fuel shell. You know what is a fuel shell? So fuel shell is an example for electrochemical shell where the fuel is directly converted into electrical energy. So we are, we are discussing the alkaline hydrogen oxygen fuel shell where the alkali is acting as a medium or an electrolyte. And the alkaline hydrogen oxygen fuel shell has found vast application in space applications and in automobiles. So therefore, the pure hydrogen is used as a fuel and carbon dioxide free oxygen is used as an oxidant. You know, Oxygen is required for the conversion of the fuel. Here we are using pure hydrogen, which is obtained by water splitting process, is used as a fuel. And oxygen, which is free from carbon dioxide, is used as an oxidant. And the electrodes required for the process are porous carbon electrodes. And the pores of the porous carbon electrodes are filled with some catalyst that is platinum or palladium and silver oxide. The porous carbon electrodes are impregnated with platinum or palladium at the anode and silver oxide at the cathode. And the electrolyte used for this hydrogen oxygen fuel shell is nearly about 30 to 40 percent aqueous solution of KOH. So this is the block diagram for the hydrogen oxygen fuel shell. So this is the anode. Yes, this part is an anode and this is the cathode, cathodic part. So the fuel that is hydrogen is supplied through this inlet. So this will be adsorbed on the surface, excess hydrogen along with the product that is formed water comes through this end, whereas pure oxygen is, that is acting as an oxidant is supplied at the cathode. Okay. 
excess oxygen comes through this outlet. So anode and cathode are separated by means of an electrolyte. Here electrolyte as just said KOH solution. Depending upon the electrolyte what we are using we have a different types of uh, fuel shells. I would like to discuss in the next session the types of the fuel shell. So what will happen here now? As the stored fuel, the hydrogen which is uh, obtained from photocatalytic or photoelectric water splitting is used. The oxidant that is nothing but uh, here supporting gas for the uh, oxidation. So here oxygen from photocatalytic or photoelectric water splitting is used. Both the uh, hydrogen and oxygen are obtained from water splitting process. And the electrolyte here used is KOH solution, aqueous KOH solution. And the electrocatalyst here we are using powdered form of platinum or palladium at the anode. So I just said anode is the porous material, the pores are filled with platinum or palladium at the anode. And uh, the pores of the cathode are filled with silver oxide. So how it works, how this hydrogen oxygen fuel shell will work? As I just said, at the anode, hydrogen gas is supplied continuously at a pressure say about 50 atmosphere pressure. And this hydrogen gas will diffuse through the pores of the electrode and it reacts with an electrolyte and undergoes oxidation to produce water. So how it happens? The hydrogen, so first it forms H plus along with electrons. The H plus that is nothing but proton combines with OH minus. OH minus comes from an electrolyte the, that is from KOH. So the proton produced combined with an electrolyte and it produces water. So therefore the reaction at the anode is nothing but hydrogen combines with an electrolyte. It forms water along with electrons. This is the reaction which occurs at the anode. The reaction occurs at the site of the anode. Then what happens? The electrons which are produced at the anode, they flow through the external circuits towards the cathode. And at the cathode, oxygen is diffused through the pores of the carbon electrode which is impregnated with a catalyst like a silver oxide. So where the hydroxide ions will be produced. So oxygen that takes up electron, oxygen that takes up electron in presence of media and it forms hydroxide. So this is the reaction which occurs at the site of the cathode. Reduction of oxygen takes place. So the overall reaction of hydrogen oxygen fuel shell that is if you combine this uh, equation 1 and equation 2 we will get the overall cell reaction. That is nothing but H2 combined with O2, it will form H2O along with energy. And this energy is used for the useful work.
that is nothing but burning hydrogen in presence of oxygen it gives water along with energy. The standard EMF of the H2O2 fuel shell is uh, nearly about 1.23 volt and where you are using this uh, hydrogen oxygen fuel shell. So, hydrogen oxygen fuel shell is used in space vehicles. It is easy to carry gases for the space applications rather than liquid and solids. Therefore, hydrogen oxygen fuel shell is uh, used in space applications, submarines and automobiles. In western countries, the Ford company manufactured the bus equipped with hydrogen oxygen fuel shell. I think in the year 2012 or something. So the next uh, topic under this uh, fourth uh, module is photovoltaic shells or you may also call it as a solar shell or in short you may call it as a PV shell. Short. PV shell, photovoltaic shell. So, what do you mean by the term photovoltaic shells? So, photovoltaic shells are solar shells are often referred as a semiconducting materials that converts solar energy or sunlight into electricity. I mean that converts solar energy directly into electrical energy. As long as light is shining on the solar cell, it generates electrical power. When light stops, electricity generation will stop. Solar cell never need recharging process, just like in case of batteries. And power generated from solar PV shells has long been seen as a clean, sustainable energy resource, which draws upon the planet's most plentiful and widely distributed a renewable energy source, the sun. So this is the block diagram of the solar shell or we call it as a photovoltaic shell. This is the block diagram of the PV shell. So how it is to be constructed? So it consists of uh, very thin uh, layer of this uh, n type the semiconducting material. We know yeah, what is n type and what is uh, p type. If a uh, silicon is uh, doped with pentavalent impurities like phosphorus, we get n type semiconducting material. If a uh, silicon is uh, doped with uh, Trivalent impurities like boron, we get P type of semiconductor. So, this is silicon, it is uh, so added with what call pentavalent impurities, that is, that impurities are you call it as a dopant. An addition of this dopant, you call it as a doping techniques. For silicon, is doped with pentavalent impurities like phosphorus, we call it as a n type semiconductors. If a silicon is doped with trivalent impurities or divalent dopant like boron, we get p type of semiconductor. It consists of a thin layer of n type semiconductor and thick layer of P type of semiconductors and uh, above this uh, n type 
there is a metal grid and uh, above this metal grid is an anti reflective layer and at the bottom we have this uh, metal back component. So what happens now I just uh, like to explain the same how this uh, see PV shell a photovoltaic shell is constructed. So silicon photovoltaic shell is composed of a very thin vapor say 250 to 300 micrometer thickness consisting of an ultra thin layer of phosphorus doped silicon or silicon which is doped with phosphorus which called n type of semiconducting material which is considered at the top of this one and is placed over boron doped silicon which act as a p type means p type is present at the bottom above which is an n type hence it forms a p n junction A metallic grid is uh, placed at the top of the n-type semiconducting material which help for the electrical contact of the diode and it also helps to allow the light radiation to fall on the semiconducting material between the grid lines. And above this uh, metallic grid, an anti reflective layer made of uh, TiO2, titanium oxide, or silicon nitride. So, what happens between the grid lines increases the amount of light which is transmitted to the semiconductor. The other part of the cell that is at the bottom. The electrical contact is uh, made by a metallic layer. So this is the some block diagram for the photovoltaic shell. So here I am just telling here this is the N layer of the junction and here this is the red one is the P layer of the junction which is a silicon doped with boron and this is a silicon doped with phosphorus and here is the metallic uh, what you call conductor metallic conductor which is placed at both this one so anti reflecting glass is placed at the top and this is uh, the another ray diagram for the photovoltaic what you call cell. So how it works, how photovoltaic shell will work that is our question. How PV shell will convert solar energy into light energy that is our question. So what happens when light radiation falls on the p-n junction diode, when light strikes on the surface of the p-n junction, so electron hole pairs are generated. There is a formation of electron holes, electron and holes you call, by the absorption of the light radiation where the absorption of the light radiation the electron hole pairs will be formed. The formed electrons here are drifted and collected at the n type n I mean at the upper side and the holes are drifted I mean moves 
and collected at the P type. Where I have taken the P at the bottom and at the top. So holes will migrate are drifted towards P type and electron will migrate at the N type. Which produce a strong electric barrier exist at the depletion region. At the two region a strong electric barrier could exist. When these two ends are connected electrically, when you connect these two ends electrically, by making use of a conductor, there is a flow of electrons, that flow of current between the two ends through the external circuit. There is a flow of current between the two ends through the external circuit. Thus, photoelectric current is produced. Thus, it creates the photoelectric current and is available for use. So, the current output of the shell that is the current obtained from the PV shell depends upon the size and efficiency which is proportional to the intensity of the solar radiation which is striking which is hitting on the surface of the shell. PV shells are connected in either series or in parallel combination so as to produce higher voltage. If you want to have a higher voltage, you have to connect the PV shells either in series or in parallel connection. And there is a term called module. What do you mean by the term module? I just said a single solar shell will produce only 0.5 volt and hence cannot be used for power generation. So only a small quantity of uh, electricity is produced by a single uh, solar shell. So now to produce required quantity, we are in need of 36 cells. At least 36 cells are connected to form a module. This module is the basic building block of a system for power generation. The shell in the modules are connected either in series provided with a protective back surface. This is called encapsulation or encapsulation and involves lamination of the shells. The encapsulation protects the module from the moisture and contaminants and pollutants from the atmosphere. The encapsulation of these will protect it from the moisture and the pollutants from the atmosphere. So there is another term called panel, solar panels, you might have heard the word solar panels, panels. If higher energy is needed, more energy is needed, the modules may be connected either in series or in parallel. The group of module that are packed and connected with wire for installation is called a panel. I repeat that say the group of module that are packed and connected with a wire for installation is called a panel. Panel is uh, typically so around 1.85 to 3.25 square meter in area. 
for ease of handling on a roof. And uh, there is another term called array. An array consists of two or more panels and forms the power generating unit. A PV system typically included or includes a panel of an array or a solar module, a combiner box, an inverter and sometime a battery and or solar tracker and interconnection panel and switches. These are the some components of the PV system. So, what are the merits of this solar energy or merits of this uh, PV shells? Definitely it is having merits. The first one, the photovoltaic uh, shell is considered to be the future sustainable energy system or energy resource which is unlimited and renewable. These two terms are very important. These are unlimited. As long as sun is there, we are getting this energy. And is renewable. Second term that is PV shell provides a power for spacecraft and satellites. Photovoltaic energy conversion is highly modular. Power supply to the remote areas where the grid extension is uh, economically not feasible, we can make use of this solar energy. That is, we can make use of this photovoltaic shell as a source of energy. Low operating cost. Operating cost are less. Cost of the installation is more at the time. is a one-time investment. Next. No moving parts, no wear and tear, quick installation and it is having excellent safety record and public acceptance is very high. Never heard any accident happen due to PV shell or due to solar energy resources. And other merits, low emission. We cannot say not at all having any emission. The construction of the component of these solar panels will emit some uh, byproducts into the environment, but very less. I am just telling the conventional energy is often made for burning fossil fuels, which releases carbon dioxide along with uh, some other byproducts and they are responsible for the pollution. But solar energy is a clean and low emission option that can decimate the earth's carbon footprint. The carbon dioxide level the earth will definitely under control if we use the solar energy. Solar energy does not produce pollution or emits greenhouse gases. The environmental impacts associated with solar energy that is production and manufacture of solar panels are much lower compared to conventional energy resources. Means uh, during the production of uh, say solar panels may produce some byproducts, but compared to conventional energy resources it is very less. So another one it 
provides the green jobs very important the emergence and popularity of renewable energy such as solar energy has created economic opportunities the solar energy industry employs many people in various segments including research and development manufacturing construction operation and installation and maintenance apart from this the development in the field of a pv shell will boost the semiconductor industry will get more opportunities to work in semiconductor industries low maintenance cost maintenance cost is very less solar energy does not requires a lot of maintenance once it is installed solar panels are durable and do not require a lot of upkeep other than clean them for a couple of times per year if something were go to wrong most companies offers a warranty which exceeds 20 years and will cover replacement and repair cost next one reliable solar energy is a proven reliable energy source compared to conventional energy resources that makes use of fossil fuels with solar energy you are not unable to the potential failings of utility companies from disasters disasters or brownouts instead you are independent and able to capture your own electricity you are not dependent on anybody else not dependent on kb kptcl etc etc you are producing your own electricity you are only dependent on sun directly connected with the sun solar generated electricity offers consistent production with low chance of failure failure chances are very less so all these are the merits of the solar energy and i would like to discuss what are the demerits of a solar energy definitely it is having certain demerits or drawbacks then what is uh, fuel cell types of fuel cells then the functioning of a methanol oxygen fuel cell in my sixth session thank you thank you one and all